As you get more comfortable working with exceptions and the try-catch block, it's useful to know how to write your own custom exception classes and then use them in your code. In this demonstration, which I'll do with the project Throwing, I'll show you how to create your own custom exception class and then how to throw it with the throw method. In this version of my project, I have two text files, one with the text right file and one with the text wrong file. My main class doesn't have any real functional code in it yet, and I've moved all of the code to actually read the contents of a file into a utility class, which I've called my file reader. To read a file, I can now call the static read file method of this class, and it will open it, get its contents, and return the string. I'll go back to my main class and my main method, and I'll declare a string variable named file contents, and I'll get its value by calling the static method read file from my file reader. And I'll pass in the name of one of my text files. I'll use textfile1.txt. Then I'll output the contents of the file to the console using systemout and the string variable that I created. I'll save and run, and I see the content of the file is write file. Now I'd like to modify my code so that when I get the text wrong file, I throw an exception, but I want it to be my own custom exception, not any of the exceptions that are built into the JDK. So I'll go back to the Package Explorer, and I'll create a new class. I'll place this new class into a new package that I'll name Exceptions, with the prefix of the rest of my application. I'll give it a name of Wrong File Exception. I'll look for the Exception class from the package java.lang, and that's the class that I'll extend. I'll make sure that I haven't implemented a main method, and I'll click Finish. The first thing you'll see when you create your own custom class extending the exception class is that there's a warning telling you that the class doesn't declare a field which is static and final and named serial version UID. This is a field that the compiler and the virtual machine expect from every exception class. It's used for serializing classes, a subject I won't be covering in this course but which would become important if you ever want to write the structure of a class to a file. In the case of an exception class, this field is expected, so we'll create it. I'll place the cursor inside the class definition, and I'll declare the field with public, static, final, and long, and I'll name it serial version UID with exactly this capitalization, and then I can assign it any long value. I'll assign it 42L which you might think has some special meaning. Of this declaration, these parts are required. Static, final, and long, and the name of the field. The actual value can be any valid long value, and the access modifier is typically public, but doesn't have to be. So now my warning goes away, and if I save my class, it all works fine. But I'm going to add one more bit of code to the class. I'm going to override the getMessage method, so that this exception class always returns the same exception string. I'll move the cursor into the class definition after the serial version UID. I'll press control space and I'll choose get message and override that method. I'll delete the automatically generated to do comment and instead of super.getMessage I'm going to return my own custom string. You chose the wrong file. So that's a custom exception class that I can now instantiate and throw in the rest of my code. I'll come back to my main class. I'll place the cursor after the output of the file contents variable, and I'll add some conditional code. I'll add an if-else clause. For my condition, I'll use filecontents.equals, and I'll look for the value write file. And within the if block, I'll output, you chose the right file. Now, if I don't get the content write file, I'll throw an instance of my new exception class. I'll use the throw method and pass in a new instance of my wrong file exception class. Notice that when I use that class, an import is added, and that's because it's in a different package than my main class. Once I have that call to throw in there, I'll get an error from the compiler, telling me that the exception is not handled and add wrong file exception to that list, 
or I can wrap this code inside a try catch block. And that's what I'm going to do. I'll select that code, right click, and choose surround with try catch. And because wrong file exception is the only type of class that's being thrown in that code block, Eclipse gets it right and creates a catch clause for that exception class. I'll remove my to do comment and I'll change this print stack trace call to system output and I'll output the exception classes message with e.get message. I'll save and run the code and once again I get right file and you chose the right file. But now I'll change the name of the file that I'm opening and reading from text file 1 to text file 2. And I'll run the code again and this time I get you chose the wrong file. And let's track through the code path. I open the file with my static method, read file. I output its contents here. That's the first line of output with wrong file. Then I get to my try catch block and my if else clause. And I jump into the else clause because I don't get the text I'm looking for. I throw my custom exception. That moves the code into the catch block and I output the error message. So that's a look at creating your own custom exception classes and using the throw method to throw them and then catch them. You can use this sort of intentional exception generation and exception handling to manage the flow of your Java applications.